Hi everyone, welcome back to the more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my rant stroke thought of the day. Definitely a rant this one. Warning, there may be some foul language here because I'm not a happy camper. You've seen the news. It looks very much like the turd that won't flush. The one-legged flamingo that is Miguel Amaron is staying at Newcastle United for another season of pure mediocrity and then excuses from people trying to say why he's not um, crap and he is crap and uh, I just honestly my head is absolutely spinning with this one I really can't believe it it looks like it's going to hamper the Cast United's opportunity to sign a quality right winger and I'm not happy at all so I'm going to get stuck right into this right now as you all saw it looked almost bang on that Miggy Alman was going to leave this transfer window. There was talk about Saudi clubs in from, and then that kind of disappeared a little bit away. He was away playing in the Copper America. And then the MLS looked like I had a real interest in him. I think it's a brand new franchise, Charlotte uh, FC. Looked like they signed up Miggy Alman. He's still a big name in the MLS. That's where he made his day, and that's where we signed him from, from Atlanta. Ironically enough, when Darren Eels was there, um, we signed him for, it was, what was it, about 20 million or something? Like that. I think it was around about that. Rafa Benitez signed him. And he came in the Premier League. We thought he was probably going to be better than he actually was. And he really wasn't that good. He had a purple patch, obviously, when we qualified for Champions League, which everybody still talks about. They forget about all the other years, which I'm going to get into in a minute. But the deal to Charlotte looked like it was going to happen. It looked like Mickey Almeron was finally leaving the football club. And he was going to go with well wishes. You know, you're going to say, listen, at times you've done bits for Newcastle, Mickey. By and large, you've been incredibly frustrating as a player. But you have done bits. You know, you'll still have that that first goal in the Champions League for 20-odd years or whatever. But you can't just attach that sentiment to a player and use that as an excuse to keep them, which a lot of these trust the process wankers are going to be saying right now. And it's really pissing me off because they're attacking anybody who's generally disappointed that Newcastle haven't upgraded on a player and a position that they should have upgraded on two windows ago, let alone this window, and we haven't done it. So he looked like it was a home banker. I think 12 million was the fee. And then, you know, typical modern day football, apparently... Uh, Miggy Almiron's wage demands and his agent fees were, were much higher than Charlotte were expecting. So they lowered the fee, I think, to around about $7 million, $9 million. And then the deal was gone because Newcastle didn't get the asking price for the player. And uh, they're open now, apparently, to keeping them at the football club, which it blows my mind. It really does. Who is open to keeping this bloke at the football club? My money's on Darren Eels, Mr. Transformative Window. We'll get into that in a second. Transformative. If this was one of the Autobots, it would turn to a toilet, Darren, because this window's been shit so far and nobody's convincing me otherwise. But going back to Miggy Armon as a player, before you all start the Miggy love in the comments about how he's brilliant, right? It doesn't matter if he's got a warm smile that can melt snow on a winter's day, right? He doesn't do it in the final third. I'm going to break the fourth wall for you here, guys. You don't get points for being a lovely lad and smiling all the time in the Premier League. You need to do things in the final third. You need to cross. You need to shoot. You need to make passes. You need to have assists. And he doesn't do it enough. And I'll tell you why he doesn't do it enough. Factually, I'll prove it why he doesn't do it enough. So if you look at Miguel Mon's time in Newcastle United, he's had over 200 appearances, 209 appearances to be exact, 30 goals and 12 assists, right? For a right winger, an attacking player in 200 games, 12 assists. Put that into context. Kieran Trippier, I think, got that in one fucking season. Kieran Trippier's had 92 appearances with him, 21 assists, and he's a fucking right back. So before you all start, oh, the trips is made from set pieces. When was the last time you saw him get a fucking set piece on target for an assist? Not a lot. A lot of his assists have come in open play from crossing the actual football into the actual box and scoring an actual fucking goal, which Mickey Armoron can't do because he's one-legged. He checks back in on the same foot. He's so predictable that everybody knows. He's as predictable as rain in fucking Cumbria is Mickey Almiron. It's always going to happen. He cuts back in on his foot because he can't use his other foot. I'll tell you why he can't use his other foot. If you want proof of that, go and look at the AC Milan game where he missed from one fucking yard because he wouldn't use his wrong foot to toe punt a ball in the back of net, which could have got us in the knockouts of the Champions League before you start with all this fucking Mickey's a great man give him a chance Chris no I'm sorry I'm not buying it the kid has worked hard for Newcastle I will give you that he has give his all but he ain't got a lot anymore I don't know if he ever had but he ain't got a lot anymore he's Average, he's rank average. He's not a top seven Premier League player. He's not even a top 10 Premier League player. You look at the kids that are coming into Brighton, right? And I'll get onto the reason why I'm really pissed off as well about this. You look at the players that Brighton have signed, they've just signed um, a Bruder that we were supposed to be looking at, the, the young lad from Mines, who won rings on Mickey Almond probably. And he's, he's 21 year old, 25 million quid. Where the fuck were you cast on that one? Sleeping behind the wheel, too busy sorting out the commercial dream team and fucking sorting out the playing staff. I don't know what's gone on with the recruitment this window, but this is absolutely shit that we're still stuck with this player who's 
what, 30 year old if he's not 29 30 and he's going backwards he's going backwards quicker than michael jackson moonwalking that's how back backwards this fucking kid's going you know you talk about that attacking third right the midfield three and the attacking third it's box office you've got joe linton you got bruno you got tonali coming back and even louis miley who's a great player joe willick's a good player you've got good players in there right and then you look at the front three gordon top quality he's that top quality right if barnes is in there you say he's a quality player right but he doesn't play barnes there because once barnes and left so he puts barnes on the bench so you end up with either Mickey Almiron or Jacob Murphy on the right-hand side. Now, Jacob Murphy's looked great in preseason, right? But all these fucking idiots thinking that Jacob Murphy's suddenly, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo reborn. Give your fucking head a wobble, man. The reason Jacob Murphy is Jacob Murphy is because he lacks consistency. He'll show up for four or five games, and he'll fucking disappear for seven or eight games. That's what he does. He's an inconsistent player. That's why he was at the championship. That's why he's... You know, he's at Newcastle United when we were shit. And, you know, yes, he's he's improved. And, yes, he works hard. And, yes, he's a utility player. And he's, he's got great banter and he's juicy and all that shit. And that's really good. But Jacob Murphy's a squad player. He shouldn't be a starting 11 player. But it looks like that's what he's going to be if Newcastle don't sign a quality right winger. We've seen Neto go to Chelsea. Yes, Neto had his injury concerns. But how much would he have elevated the quality on that right-hand side? We we look like... It would be like putting Susan Boyle in the Pussycat Dolls. You've got these worldies one side and you've got... Susan Boyle, yeah, yeah, she can sing a bit, but fucking hell, that, that group does not look as attractive, does it, when you put her in there compared to the rest of them? Sorry, Susan Boyle, but it's a, it's a good analogy to use. But that's the same when you put Mickey Armour or Jacob Murphy on the right-hand side of Newcastle attack. And Murphy is way ahead of Mickey Armour right now because he can actually do something. Mickey Armour just runs around like a dog chasing a ball at the beach. I've said that a hundred times. I still can't believe I'm using that analogy because this useless twat is still here because somebody at the football club is too sentimental about getting rid of this player. Like I said, you look at the teams that were in for him, Saudi teams in the MLS, nobody across Europe was looking at this player. Not a single club across Europe was looking at this player. That should tell you exactly where he sits Quality wise, you know, and, and what's really pissed me off the most is when we were thinking about Mickey Armour on this summer window, we were all saying, well, at least we've got Jan Kuba Minter coming back. And all these fucking idiots going, we need to stop moaning about a player that was sold for PSI, never played for the football club. No, you don't need to stop moaning about it. You're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to your stupid opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion as well. There's a kid there who, mark my words, you can click this, will have a great season for Brighton. He will get goals. He will get assists. He will be a threat. No disrespect to Brighton. He'll probably go beyond Brighton after having a good season or two and maybe go to the next level. You know, and Brighton's a really good football club and a scouting department is amazing. Fucking hell, Newcastle. Never mind getting somebody in who can do commercial deals with airlines and fucking advertising companies. Get a scouting network from Brighton because they've got it clicked. Look at the players that they've signed. Between Brighton and West Ham, they've won this transfer window. We have been atrocious this transfer window. Too busy sorting the upstairs out and not looking at the downstairs. And I think it's going to come back and bite Newcastle on the arse. They've still got Mark Gahey to try and get over the line. That's looking even harder to do as the days go by. But the right wing position was a key position for Newcastle that they needed to sort out and they haven't sorted it out. I don't know what to do with it. But it worries me when you hear Eddie Howe coming out saying how Miggy's an important player for the squad. And you always see Darren Eels grinning, you know, because he's thinking about Miggy's commercial appeal in America. I give a fuck if he sells shirts in America, Darren Eels. He doesn't do it on a football pitch. Missing from one yard. Shit assists. Passing stats are atrocious. Mark's not here to put his radar up, but if he did, it would back up everything I'm saying that Miggy Almoron is not effective in the final third. Doesn't matter, he's a lovely kid. He probably is a lovely kid. And if I bumped him in the street, he's probably the nicest kid in the world, but he's not effective enough to take Newcastle to where they should want to be this season, which is the top four. We need to get back to the Champions League, but if we're not going to get rid of Dross like him and Ryan Fraser, Ryan Fraser, we can't even give that fucking shit house away because Southampton is saying the deal is practically impossible. What are we asking for here? Are we expecting people to pay top class prices for mediocre players it ain't gonna happen we've stuck with these players these are championship players these are bruce players these are ashley players and they're still at newcastle united now it could be because the old regime put them on ridiculous salaries that we are now stopped paying for five years right and that's just across the bear but honestly it's getting to the point now with newcastle united where i honestly do think a psr breach may have to be on the cards to get rid of the deadwood at this football club just to move on, take a 10-point deduction. You'll get it back if you buy better players than these lot because it really is disappointing. This window was supposed to be transformative, as I said before, and it's been utterly dross so far. Reserve goalkeepers from Nottingham Forest, 
John Ruddy, who I think last time played for England, I had way more hair than I've got right now. Um, you've got Lloyd Kelly from Bournemouth, you know, um, and that's it. That's it. And then you sorry, you've got um Usala from Sheffield United, who didn't get a goal in 21 appearances. It's hardly fucking exciting, really, is it? And listen. You're entitled to your opinion if you're blinded by optimism with a trust the process. You know, it's okay. You can trust the process as much as you want. But don't attack somebody for asking for questions to be answered about why the window's been so crap, why Newcastle have been asleep behind the wheel for so long, and why all of these good targets have disappeared after other football clubs that really financially we should probably be more superior than. It just blows my mind. It really, really does. Someone's been asleep behind the wheel. The club need to answer questions. Never mind putting drones in the sky and talking about the fucking stack with your arm on Adam Pearson. Get your shit together and go and sign players in key positions because this squad needs it. So that's my opinion on that, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments below, whether you agree or disagree with me. It's all cool. We'll have a good chat with you. Just keep it above the bell. Don't be a prick or you'll get the flick, as we always say. If this is the kind of thing you like, smash subscribe, come and join us, like the video, help the channel grow. Loads of content coming this week. The Premier League is back. I'll be back with the previews, the post-match analysis, any transfer videos, if there is any transfer activity. It's looking very, very slim at the moment. But keep it ever more, guys. Have a good one. And let's hope Newcastle save this window by buying Gay and a good right winger to do something to this squad. Because at the minute, it's threadbare in depth. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Cheers.